What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to talk about 10 SAT strategies that you can use to literally get a perfect score without a doubt. Because I know the SAT is hard and you guys want to make sure you can maximize your score. And there's not really one single video that has all the strategies you need. And this video probably won't cover all of them either. But these 10 strategies, they'll get you right. So the first strategy that you guys need to implement ASAP is to pray. Hey, you never know, right? When you got a B and a C and you need to pick between the twos and 50-50 shot, you might have to look at a higher power to get that that question right that's actually a serious tip i've done it before now the second strategy well or the first real strategy is that considering you have studied you should be able to speed run the non-calc and i want you to speed run the non-calc even if you're not at the most comfortable you know level of the sat math non-calc section and the reason is a lot of students tend to get SAT math non-cal questions wrong because students, what they do is they tend to overthink a lot, right? They'll get a problem right. And then they start overthinking and start redoing the math and making mistakes that they didn't make the first time. And because of the mistakes, they're now, you know, spending more time on the problem. And now they're also getting it wrong. So it's better just to speed on the non-calc and trust your gut because usually the first time you do the problem is a time where you're using everything that you know because that's the first time you're seeing the problem. So you're using all the skills in your toolbox to get the answer but once you start reanalyzing the problem over and over again you might start messing up now if you see a problem and you have no idea how to do it in the first place since you're speed running it's best to skip it and come back to it later just make sure you put a nice star or a mark to indicate that hey i need to make sure i do this problem because some students forget that would suck to get a question wrong just for not putting an answer down at all and once you speed run you have more time left over so you can always go back and check your answers in case you think that you may have messed up somewhere or if you missed a problem and you want to solve it later on my next strategy is to check out my sat courses i have st reading crash course now and st math course and also have them as a part of a bundle where you get a serious discount on both courses if you get the bundle so be sure to check them out because these strategies and tips and patterns for reading and math are all my courses and that's all you guys really need to get 1600 and you can finish it within a day because i think it's like 14 hours total between both of them combined like you'll be a genius my next strategy is to eliminate three now this is a common strategy that i've talked about in multiple videos just because it's a more of a, psych a psychology trick and basically what you do is sometimes on the st math and st reading you try to really find the correct answer by doing all the math or rereading the entire passage or whatever, however you do it. Sometimes as you go, you should incrementally check the answer choices for the problem and see which ones you can already X out, right? For example, for the math, let's say there's a, you're doing the math and after the second line of math, second step in the problem, you find out that X has to be positive. You don't know the value of X, but you know it has to be positive. You can already eliminate a, B, and C if they're negative, and as a result, you're left with D, which is the only positive choice. Now that's your answer, right? So by eliminating three, you're saving yourself time and you're actually helping yourself think more strategically and more algorithmically when you're solving these problems. And that is really the way that these SAT problems are designed. They're not really designed for you to solve and find the final answer, at least the first couple of questions on SAT not count from 1 to 16, right? And same for, for the majority of SAT reading, it's not all about just finding the correct answer sometimes the problems are designed so that if you're smart about it you can start limiting pro um, problems or answers as you go through the steps of math through the steps of reading analyzation so be sure to eliminate three next strategy is to save formulas in your calculator this is a no-brainer guys like if you forget formulas easily to save them in your calculator then on the calculator section you can utilize that it's no brainer next strategy is to read entire passages at a fast rate for the writing section now if the writing section a lot of students tend to wonder okay should i read slowly or should i just skim or should i just skip to the part the underlined parts that are being questioned but most of the times it's better if you actually read the entire passage just at a faster rate because sometimes the writing question might ask you a question that is revolving around the paragraph ordering and for that you need to understand the the chronology of the passage if i understand what's going on sometimes the uh the question might ask you what's a good concluding sentence that restates the author's main point in the writing section and if you don't know the author's main point because you're just skipping to the underlying portions you won't be able to get that question correct so it's better sometimes just to read the entire passage and to like just read it at a faster rate don't read it like you read reading comprehension or you're going nice and slow you want to read at a faster rate because the writing section you have less time than you would for if the ratio was one minute per problem you do have you have less than a minute for a problem so you don't want to spend too much time reading the passage the next strategy is to read the questions first guys by reading the questions first you're able to have some problems in mind some questions in mind as you read and by doing that 
you are already you know, making your brain pay attention to what you're reading. You're already forcing your, your brain and your attention on the passage because sometimes students, they read the passage and they're like, wait, what did I just read? I was thinking about like burgers this entire time. Guys, you don't want to be that student because at that point, you practically are not getting a high score on the essay reading. Like right there, it's your chances are over unless you're some God reader. So what you really have to do is read the questions first because that way you can at least have two or three questions in mind like a main idea question, like the main purpose question, like vocabulary questions, right? You can answer those as you go. And that will save you a lot of time. And that brings you to my next strategy right away. That's to answer the vocabulary questions specifically, like for sure, as you go, because these questions are such a gimme question. And these questions can be answered the first time you, you come across that word, right? A lot of students, what they do, they'll read the passage and then they'll read the questions. And then one of the questions will be like in line 69, what does the word ring mean? right then they're going to go back to line 69 read line 67 to 72 just to find the answer but if they had already knew that this word ring would be in question once they first read ring and read the lines prior which is like fresh in their brain and then the lines after which is also fresh in their brain they can answer that question right away and then when you go to the actual questions and you'll see like question seven is already answered you get a nice feeling like oh my god i can skip this question because i already answered it and that feeling is very powerful like when i you should get that feeling. And I was like, oh my God, I already answered questions seven and nine. Because they were vocab questions and I answered them as I read. I feel like I have so much time on the essay reading passage. Like so much time. And I cover all these tricks on my essay reading course. If you guys like want like all the tips, tricks, and patterns strategy, be sure to check that out. Link in the description below for a serious discount. My next strategy is to clear your calculator, please. All right, when the ST math section calculator begins, you guys better clear your calculator. And if you do not know how to clear your calculator, if you have a TI-84, which you should be using, and that's like another like bonus strategy, please use a TI-84, it helps a ton. Second plus 712, you clear all your RAM. Because what students don't realize is sometimes they might have saved variables in their calculator. And as a result, they might put an X and they might want X to be 10, but X is like seven because of a previous question they did, like maybe last week when they were practicing for the SAT. That can really mess you up that can lead you to get me a question wrong or lead you to god forbid getting you a answer that's not even one of the choices and you're like whoa i definitely messed up then you start panicking you're like, oh my god i'm wasting time now but i don't know what to do so you don't want to end up in that state so to not end up in that state please clear your calculator before the sd math sac calc section begins and if you're taking digital sat just clear it right away before the sd math begins because you have the calculator on both parts you will realize how much of a difference this makes once you actually do it. So even when you practice, just get in the habit of clearing your calculator before your practice session begins. And maybe every now and then, it's not bad to like knowing that you have solving the problems in the section, just clear your calculator. It takes literally a second and it helps prevent any like silly errors that can cost you big time. And the last strategy, and this is to save you guys mental peace, all right? I support mental health. After you take the SAT, all right, I'm not gonna say don't talk about with your friends because obviously I'm, I was a student I know that you guys are probably gonna be like, yo, Josh, yo, Bill, like, like, what'd you get for this question? What'd you get for this question? Like, it's gonna happen, right? In fact, it might even happen during the, the test breaks because I've seen students do it all the time. I'm not gonna say don't do that because that would just be me being a hypocrite. But after you take the SAT, like, let's say after you get through that initial, hey, what'd you get for this one? What'd you get for this one? Don't think about it. Don't even talk about it. Get it out your brain. You're done. Go, go have fun. Go to a party. Go, I don't know, drink water or soda or prime. Like do something that you enjoy, all right? Because once the ST is over, if you keep thinking about it, you're gonna start like being like, oh my God, I think I got this problem wrong when you actually got it right. And you're gonna start overthinking and you're just gonna like go down to like a bad, bad hole, right? And you don't wanna do that. So after you take the SAT, just forget about it. So those are the 10 strategies that you guys can use on your next SAT, whether it be March, June, April, May, I don't really know. And if you need further help, right? And you want serious help and you're really serious about getting a high SAT score, be sure to check out my SAT crash course bundle. I highly recommend it because if you're gonna get the math course and reading course anyway, don't get it separately, get the bundle. It's way cheaper. I'm trying to help you guys. So ace the SAT, get a high score, check out my courses, link in the description below. Peace.